CBS News investigation has revealed very troubling information about how we get our chocolate. In particular, Mars products like M&Ms and Snickers that are some of Americans' favorites. Yes, they are. Deborah Pata traveled to Ghana for this story and found children, some as young as, listen to this, five years old that were harvesting cocoa. Deborah's here with us now in the studio. Deborah, it's good to have you in person. Good to see you. I'm sorry it's for a story like this. Good morning to you. A very good morning, Gail. Well, Mars did over $45 billion in annual sales last year, in large part from selling chocolates like those M&Ms and Snickers. It vowed to have systems in place to eradicate child labor from its supply chain by 2025. But we saw little evidence of this. Laboring in the blistering heat here, as young as six, slicing the grass with lethal ease, their machetes nearly half the size of the smallest among them. These Ghanaian children are harvesting the cocoa that ends up in America's best-loved chocolates like M&Ms and Snickers. Instead of going to school, they are learning that sharp blades cut deep and big corporations make promises they seldom keep. We traveled across Ghana's remote cocoa belt, visiting small subsistence farms that supply U.S. chocolate giant Mars, and found children working on every one of them. Mars boasts about rescuing thousands of children who are listed as beneficiaries of what it calls their robust monitoring system that keeps them off plantations and in schools. CBS News obtained copies of these lists from a whistleblower. We're going to try and find some of the children on these lists and see if the information checks out. Our first stop, 15-year-old Munira. And your name, I think, is on this list. Is that you? Here she is, toiling away on her family farm, her life, since she was just five years old. School's a luxury she's hardly ever been. I feel sad. I want to be a like medical doctor, but they don't, they don't have money to support me. The family harvested only one bag of cocoa the entire year. A 140-pound sack fetches around $115. Last year, field supervisors contracted by Mars. And this is all they gave you? Gave Manira a backpack and school books with the slogan, I am a child, I play, I go to school. In the nearly 18 months since then, nobody has checked to see if she is still in school. This cocoa field supervisor for the past 13 years spoke out on condition we hide his identity. Personally, I've made lists before. I've made a place before. And I can say on authority that almost every data, almost every data is cool or incorrect or in, it's not correct nobody has come back to check as to whether it's true or not cbs news spoke to nearly a dozen children on that list used by mars none of them were in school nor had they been regularly monitored to ensure they attended classes no one came here ever the few children that do go to school instead of pencils are carrying machetes put your hands up if you work on the cocoa farms. All these students told us they harvest cocoa either before or after school. We have repeatedly asked Mars for an interview. They declined every request. Hi, good morning. Yes, good A security morning. guard Hi, asked us to leave you. their headquarters yeah, when we went there. Can you please leave? Hi. And How are we you? even Hi, went to the CEO's you. home yes, to Mr. try and get please. answers. No, sorry, he's not here. He's U.S. human here. rights lawyer Terry Collingsworth also wants answers. He's filed a proposed class action lawsuit for consumer fraud against American chocolate manufacturer Mars and others. They're telling the public that we're re rehabilitating this kid and then they're cynically coming here and just checking a box and they, the kid is back working the next day. That's he fine. has collected statements from Ghanaian children working for Mars suppliers. Okay, thank you for being very brave. Like these little boys doing the backbreaking work of adult men. Tiny hands struggling with the dangerous work of hacking open cocoa pods the long blade narrowly missing this five-year-old's fingers. The owners of Mars are the third wealthiest family in the U.S. 
raking in billions every year, much of it from chocolate. Billions made on the backs of these young children. Oof. And late yesterday, Mars did send us a written statement where they condemned the use of child labour, denied pressurising any field workers to fabricate data, but conceded more needs to be done. So they're not this. denying that that footage you have is not authentic, right? So these kids are on these farms, they're, they're, they're farming these beans, it's dangerous work. What would it take for Mars to get behind an effort that would eradicate the mm. problem? Frankly, Tony, not a lot. If they spend some of the money that they use to fight lawsuits, this isn't the first one. $200 million could be going a long way to changing it. One mother said, all we need is bicycles so our kids can cycle to school. It's an hour away. They can't afford that. And more importantly, pay the farmers more for their cocoa. I'm sure consumers would be thrilled yeah, I've, to I've know heard... their money's going to help kids go to school. Yes, fighting the lawsuits, I hear they're, they're quite litigious, but I'm sitting here with two packs of M&Ms in my purse right now, even as we speak. Mm. Now that we see the, a story like this, what should we do with this information? Mm. Well, I think Question. what we need to do is pressurize these cocoa companies who signed a declaration more than 20 years ago to eradicate child labor to actually do it. This is a fixable problem. Mm -hmm. We don't often go to places where we feel that, but this is. Yes. Use that money, build schools, Get these kids an education. Look at the potential there. Yes. 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 Deborah, that was eye-opening. Yes. Very eye-opening. And disturbing. Thank you very much. Great to have you here on very set as well. Very disturbing. Yeah. Good to time. see you in studio. Yeah,